don't say any comments. It's going to go right in the way. Blessings. Hallelujah. Blessings. We're here on Facebook Live, getting ready to go on um, with our program. And today's program is called God Calls You into Multiple Ministries. Estamos preparándonos para ir live con una nueva enseñanza que se llama Dios te llama a ministerios múltiples. Amén. Dios le bendiga. Gloria a Dios. El Señor es tan bueno y grande es su misericordia. Amén. Eh, vamos a empezar a grabar en unos instantes. Aquí está el pastor. Salúdelo. Amén. Dios es lindo. Oh, Dios es bueno. Well, not yet. We're going to start doing our thing now. Okay. Oh, can I do my intro? Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Mi nombre es Dexter Phelps. Mi esposa es Marisol Phelps. Mi corazón. ¿Cómo estás? Gloria a Dios. Buenas noches, everyone. Amen. <laughs> How was that? That was great, Dexter. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm, I'm live now if I'm recording. <laughs> It says live. Okay, live. Gracias. El pastor que lo digo otra vez, I want you to say it again. Okay. Bienvenidos a Facebook Live con la pastora Marisol, yeah. la reverenda profeta, doctora Marisol Peltzer, y mi amantísimo esposo, el reverendo Dexter Peltzer, un apóstol, y él quiere dar la introducción. Go ahead. Oh, mi nombre es Dexter Peltzer. Mi esposa es Marisol Peltzer. Uh, mi corazón, <laughs> gloria a Dios, como estas, buenas noches, and bienvenidos. Bienvenidos, amén. Amen. El programa hoy se trata de, Dios se llama a ministerios múltiples. Tonight's program is called, The Lord is calling you to multiple ministries, amen. And while Pastor Dexter prays for the program, I'm going to share it on Facebook Live, amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, glorious Father, we thank you for everything. We thank yes. you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your watching over us. We thank you that you have plans for each one of us, Father. I thank you that they're beautiful plans that are made in heaven. And Lord, today I ask you to bless the show, open up our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive your truth, and um, awaken a fire within us for the calling you have for us and the ministries you would like us to accomplish while we're here on this earth. Um, I ask you to guide us into those and awaken those within us and even those that have been buried or put aside for a season. I ask you to awaken them, forgive us for, for putting them aside if it, that was not your will. I ask you to awaken those ministries and awaken us to fulfill what your perfect will is for our lives in those ministries. In Jesus name, amen. Okay. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I'm not ready. I have to share it to the groups. Okay. Well, I, and can I start on a scripture or you want me to wait a second? No, you have to wait a second <laughs> okay. while I share All right. This. Then, then um, You minist- need to chat. Yeah, I, I can chat. Chat, I can chat, chat. chat, chat, chat. So um, ministry is something that we're all called to do. I'm just going to kind of do an uh, introduction. And I... I find it's amazing. Today we're going to talk about um, our calling into many different ministries, and in particular, how God has called us into. It's we wrote down ten, and you could even write down more. You could even segment those, but ten ministries that the Lord has opened the doors for us to do. And what I want you to hear from that is the op- the Lord opened the doors for all ten of those ministries. We did not force it. We did not grab someone, ask them to lay hands on us, and then run out and do that ministry that they were doing, try to replicate them. Um, all these were callings from God and supernatural in how they came about um, and divine connections, and they were all validated by God. Um, and um, even before I start, I just want to tell you a mantra that has blessed us tremendously that the Lord told us early on, which is, he who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. And therefore, if the God calls you into a ministry, in the beginning, when Marisol first met you, I was um, sweeping floors, setting up tables, cleaning bathrooms. Remember that, Marisol? Mm -hmm. And um, that was something I needed to do with all my heart, 
unto the Lord and unto the people that I was serving and do it with excellence. And I did, and honestly, I loved it. There was joy in that ministry. I was director of a senior center. There was incredible joy in serving the seniors. Um, and you think you're a director, so you just tell everyone what to do, but no, you know, nonprofits like senior centers in a little town, they don't have a lot of money. So you end up doing lots of work <laughs> because that's the, just the way it is. Those of you who are in nonprofits, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and this was a nonprofit. So, but the point being, if you're faithful in it and you stick with what God is doing and forming you to prepare you for later on, because it's a season of preparation, then he, it says, if you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. And it says, if you humble yourself, then he'll lift you up in due season. And that means when the time is right. And that's exactly what he did in our calling to all 10 ministries. And he didn't do them all in one day. He did them over time. Um, and I find it remarkable how he works. But another thing, and the spirit just fell on me, that I need to make sure you understand is, what he shows you to do, stay faithful with it till he, not someone else, that tells you you need to be doing something different or gives you a prophetic word, sorry. But God himself tells you to stop doing it and turn directions and do something different, which he did with us mm -hmm. in a couple of ministries. He literally... Um, Say, get out of there. He, he literally had an eagle take us off that mountain and showed us that it was dead or dying. And the eagle pulled us off in her dream and moved us to another mountain. And in that day, everything happened for that to happen without even us realizing it. At the end of the day, we just looked at each other and said, that was remarkable. That wasn't like six months out. That happened that day. Um, but God has a way of getting you where he needs you to be. Um, and that's also very important in fulfilling your ministry. If he asked you to move, which he did with us twice now, um, from, can you turn your sound um, Thank you. Yes, it from, uh, you know, um, Tennessee to California, now from California here. So he's moved us now twice. Um, and, and in each time he's established new ministries. Yes. So I find that just beautiful how he works. Okay. Do you want to translate some? <laughs> okay. Well, I wasn't hearing most of it. <laughs> Hermanos, hoy vamos a estar hablando como cuando Dios nos llama, Él nos da una esfera de influencia y en esa esfera de influencia hay una multiplicidad, una variedad de llamamientos que Él nos llama de acuerdo a nuestros dones espirituales y también de acuerdo a nuestro nivel de fidelidad y de obediencia. Una de las cosas muy importantes, y yo pienso que críticas y que si usted quiere eh, ser un siervo, una sierva efectiva, llena del poder del reino de Dios, no solamente tiene que tener la unción, pero usted tiene que ser obediente y fiel a lo que Dios le ha llamado. Porque si usted, usted puede ser muy, muy ungido, y, y, y puede tener muchos dones espirituales, pero si usted no tiene disciplina y usted no es fiel y obediente, de nada le sirve. Amén. Entonces hoy vamos a estar hablando y, por ejemplo, el Señor nos ha mudado dos veces a nosotros, primero de Tennessee a California y de California donde estamos ahora. Eh, la obediencia es muy importante en el reino. Amén. And you know, I was telling them too yeah. that another thing that um, besides being faithful, yeah, um, is being disciplined. Um, yes, yes, and, and organized. And, and organized, because yeah. you can have all the giftings in the world. Mm -hmm. You can be anointed, but if you're not disciplined, yeah, and if you're not obedient and faithful, you're not going to go anywhere. It's true. You can't just expect God to do things for you. Usted no puede esperar que Dios haga las cosas por usted. Usted tiene que ponerse en acción. Eh, eh, caminar, hacer lo que Dios requiere que usted haga. You know, you have to take action. Yeah, like and for example, action. you know, one of your ministries, which was beautiful, was um, when Mary would come to live with us, we would live with us, which she did and did ministry for almost a year, about a year. Um, you were faithful to set up meetings at many, many churches, and but you couldn't just sit back and wait for the phone to ring. You went out and made the connections and um, made the 
ministry appointments for her to preach. Por ejemplo, usted tiene que tomar pasos de acción. Cuando la hermana Mary venía y se quedaba con nosotros y nosotros la ayudábamos en el ministerio, yo tenía que, antes de que ella viniera, hacer la agenda. Yo no podía esperar que los hermanos me llamaran y que Dios hiciera los apoyos para mí. Yo llamaba a las iglesias, hablaba con los pastores, hacía la agenda. Este día vamos a estar aquí, ella va a estar aquí. Tomaba acción. Entonces el Señor bendecía la acción, la acción y abría puertas. Amén. Amén. And the Lord would open doors. Yeah, let me give another example of you rubbing off on me. Otro ejemplo de que yo me le estoy pegando al pastor porque soy bien accionista. Siempre estoy en movimiento. You have to understand, this happens with Marisol every week. Eso pasa conmigo, dice él, toda la semana. And not for me, but I figured, you know what, Lord, just use me more like you use Marisol. Él le dijo al Señor, Señor, úsame más a mí como tú usas a Marisol. Perdona que ese es Ricky que está ladrando que está diciendo. So I told these neighbors who were good friends, About our ministry in Venezuela. Él le dijo a unos vecinos sobre el ministerio que tenemos en Venezuela. And how we were, you know, um, gonna, there's people that are donating um, uh, clothing and other items that they need down there right now. Vamos, entonces le estaba diciendo que, que estamos mandando ropa y cosas que necesitan en Venezuela. So today they gave me half a car full of clothes and power tools for us to Hoy le dieron there. al pastor porque él les contestó y les habló del ministerio en Venezuela. Um, la mitad del carro lleno de ropa y de, de herramientas para mandar para la iglesia en Venezuela para que sea de bendición. O sea, usted tiene que tomar acción, no es solamente yo tengo un ministerio, yo soy ungido, todo me va a caer del cielo, no. Usted tiene que tomar pasos de fe, usted tiene que tomar acciones, usted tiene que, que, que eh, Jesucristo caminó por todo Jerusalén, you know, like, Jesus walked all over Israel. <laughs> And everywhere he went was very purposeful, even the woman at the well. Y donde quiera que point. él iba era con un propósito específico. Amén. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, and the purpose of today is for God to awaken a fire in us and also awaken our callings. Dice que, que el propósito de la enseñanza de hoy es que se despierte en nosotros un fuego de activación para que nosotros cumplamos el llamado de Dios en nuestras vidas. And then, so I'm going to first do some scriptures. Primero vamos a hacer algunos versículos bíblicos. And then we're going to talk about the, the 10 plus ministries that God is actually working in us right now. Vamos a hablar, vamos a poner una fundación bíblica y después vamos a hablar sobre los diferentes aspectos del ministerio de nosotros. So can, y como Dios abrió la puerta para cada uno de esos ministerios fluya y esté activo. So we can understand we can bear incredible fruit for the Father if we surrender to his perfect will. Para que entendamos que usted puede tener fruto muy lindo cuando usted se rinde a las instrucciones y a la voluntad de Dios. Okay, let's start with 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9. Prisegura de Simoteo. Una, del 6 al 9. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Este es Pablo hablándole a Timoteo. And he says, I'm going to read it first okay, in English. Okay. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore... Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, which is part of our ministry always to give a testimony of him, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That means you, Marisol, and I. Okay, déjame leerlo en español. Dice, Primera de Timoteo, Timoteo 1 del 6 al 9. Por lo cual te aconsejo que avives el fuego del don de Dios que está en ti por la imposición de manos. Porque no nos ha dado Dios espíritu de cobardía, sino de poder, de amor y dominio propio. Por tanto, no te avergoncéis de dar testimonio de nuestro Señor ni de mí, preso suyo 
sino participa de las aflicciones por el Evangelio según el poder de Dios, quien nos salvó y llamó con llamamiento santo, no conforme a nuestras obras, sino según el propósito suyo y la gracia que nos fue dada Eso. en Cristo Jesús antes de los tiempos de los siglos. Amén. So I didn't finish verse 9, but I want to finish focus on that for a second. It says he called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, what we think we should be doing, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Now, what's important is we shouldn't be doing what's right in our own eyes and creating our own ministry, but we should be doing what the Holy Spirit leads us to do to fulfill his purposes. Okay, let me translate. Dice aquí, ¿verdad? En el versículo 9, dice explícitamente que él nos llamó, él nos salva primero, ¿verdad? Entonces después nos llama con un llamamiento santo, que no es conforme a nuestras obras, ¿verdad? Sino según su propósito, el propósito de Dios. Y, y entonces él nos da la gracia para cumplir ese llamamiento. Go ahead. Ok, so that's really important that we understand that we need to be doing the works he's ordained for us, not what we want to do ourselves. Nosotros tenemos que hacer y cumplir las obras que el Señor nos ha llamado a hacer, no las que nosotros pensamos con nuestros ojos, según nuestras habilidades, sino las obras que el Espíritu Santo le está haciendo usted hacer. Tal vez cosas que están fuera totalmente de la espera que usted nunca había hecho antes. Amén. Por ejemplo, el pastor nunca había estado en televisión y pensaba estar en televisión y ese abrió esa puerta y él caminó por ella. And like, let me, like, you know, like you're led by the Spirit and he calls you and he might call you into an area that is totally unexpected. Yes. Like it happened to you yes. with the TV ministry. Right, when I was just sitting um, in the audience. He was sitting in the audience and the person that was teaching said, you know, I feel led of the Spirit for you to do the next program. Next TV show. Next TV show. And he gave him 15 minutes to get ready. I don't even know he gave me that. But like maybe. 10 minutes. Yeah, whatever. It was, uh, it was not a long <laughs> time. And Dexter got ready and he made his first TV program without preparing. No expectancy of being in TV. No desire to be <clears throat> in TV. But the Holy and Spirit. And the Spirit knew. The good news was, and the Spirit just fell on me, the Spirit took over because I didn't get in a way with my own works. He just led and anointed me with the words to speak. And it was really remarkable to see the Spirit move that way, even when you're really relatively unprepared. Fíjese que fue el Espíritu Santo que abrió esa puerta y el programa salió precioso porque el programa no lo hizo el pastor en sus habilidades, sino que el Espíritu Santo lo ayudó a hacer el programa. Amén. Entonces, eso es esencial. Y vamos a empezar de nuevo a grabar programas de televisión pronto en unas dos o tres semanas. Amén. And that leads me to tell the brothers and sisters that we are going to start taping our TV programs, a half hour TV programs, half an hour in Spanish, half an hour in English, starting in two or three weeks. Amen. Yeah, We're going to we, restart them again. We're making the preparations. Mm -hmm. Even, yeah, well, there's some things that have to be done, even behind us with the screen and other things. It's just, it's But we're be, preparing. But we're preparing. And the thing is, I think, um, I think it's safe to say um, the Lord is bringing us to a new level, hopefully of excellence that pleases him um, in doing that. And that is something that hopefully will be a blessing. Amen. All right. So stay tuned. We'll tell you when it is. Amen. And that reminds me to please to join our YouTube channel, shalomshalom.org. We have over 800 programs in English, Spanish, and Arabic. Amen. And we're also starting a new uh, radio station. So when we start the new radio station, we'll be telling you it's coming soon. Amen. It's Which called is... I Kingdom Radio, it's called. Yeah, okay. which is the, the third one. The second mm -hmm. was in Mexico, and the first is uh, Jerry's. Jerry, Praise uh, Radio. Which is Praise Radio. Oh, and again, praise the Lord, because each of those... The Lord opened the door. ...did not 
call someone, you weren't the connector on it, people called us and the Lord then intervened and then the Lord validated, um, which is beautiful uh, the way God works. Okay, so our ministry. I think it's important that we understand really what ministry is in God's eyes. So let's turn to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Vamos a ver a Efesios. What Efesios? Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Efesios 4, del 11 al 15. Vamos a ir ahora. And this is important again, that we understand that your calling, like for the fivefold ministry, has to come from the Lord Jesus himself. No man can... can anoint you and dedicate you into an office. It, it actually comes from the Lord, the fivefold ministry. El ministerio quintuple de ser apóstol, evangelista, profeta, maestro, ¿verdad? Eh, y pastor, espera, lo dije bien. Apóstol, profeta, evangelista, ma, pastor y maestro. El Señor te llama a uno de esas ofertas de esos ministerios, una de esas oficinas directamente. Amén. Okay. Vamos a ir a Efesios 4, del 11 al 15. So verse 11. Dice. Vamos a ver qué dice. And he himself, Jesus, again, himself, not a man, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what? For the equipping of the saints. For what? The work of ministry, that's everything. Proclaiming the gospel, making disciples of all men, that's everything. Inside the church walls and outside. You can't miss that. Put a one next to that. And number two, for the edifying of the body of Christ, it, it, the, the callings and then the giftings that are released are to edify the body. Go ahead. Okay. Dice, y el mismo constituyó a uno apóstoles, a otros profetas, a otros evangelistas y a otros pastores y maestros para, para evangelizar adentro y afuera de la iglesia, ¿verdad? Ese es un primer propósito. Y también a fin de perfeccionar a los santos para la obra del ministerio, para la edificación del cuerpo de Cristo, para la edificación de las personas que ya son cristianas. O sea que tiene dos dimensiones eh, para alcanzar a los perdidos Y para edificar a las personas que están en la iglesia. Amén. So the word says, do not forsake the assembling together with your brothers and sisters in church, right? La palabra dice que no nos dejemos de congregar, ¿verdad? And so we need to know what we're about to read can only occur generally in the church. Y lo que vamos a leer a continuación solamente pasa generalmente en la iglesia. So it says the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, dice, a fin de perfeccionar a los santos para la obra del ministerio, para la edificación del cuerpo de Cristo, hasta que todos lleguemos a la unidad de la fe y del conocimiento del Hijo de Dios, a ser un varón perfecto, fíjese, ahora lo más importante, a la medida de la estatura de la plenitud de Cristo. And that's very essential. Y eso, esto es esencial. So you, you need to be within an assembly of a church and under Por the covering tanto, of a pastor. usted, una de las cosas para tener un llamamiento, tiene que estar en una iglesia bajo la cobertura De un pastor, si usted again, no está, está fuera de orden. That's where the equipping and the growth to become like Christ happens. Porque ahí es donde el Señor lo equipa y hace que usted crezca para que usted llegue a la medida de la estatura de la plenitud de Cristo. Si usted no está en la iglesia, usted no puede crecer espiritualmente. Usted no está siendo edificado y creciendo espiritualmente bajo una cobertura, bajo un pastor que lo disipule. Amén. Now I'm going to read 14, 15, 16, but we're going to focus only on 16. Vamos a leer ahora el 13, so, 14 y 15, pero nos vamos I'm, a enfocar I'm going to read them all, but we're going to focus 16. on 16. That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So in other words, the church protects you. Okay. La iglesia, cuando tú haces que la iglesia te protege, ¿verdad? Porque by dice... The, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. 
but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Now, verse 16. Okay. I, From I, whom? I, you, you need to do little shorter okay. things because okay. I can't translate that much. This okay. I don't remember. Para que ya no seamos niños fluctuantes, llevado por donde quiera de todo viento de doctrina, por estragema de hombres, o sea, por enseñanzas erróneas, que para que te engañar emplean con astucia las artimañas del error, sino que siendo la, siguiendo la verdad en amor, crezcamos en todo aquel que es la cabeza. Esto es Cristo. I just read 14. Ok, verse 16. Mm -hmm. From whom the whole body, the whole church, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, you, me, everyone, according to the effective working by which every part, every person, does his share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Dice, de quien todo el cuerpo bien concertado y unido entre sí por todas las coyunturas que se ayuden, ayuda mutuamente según la actividad propia de cada miembro, recibe su crecimiento para ir edificándose en amor. Amén. So, Número uno en this is our first ministry, which is in our local church. El primer ministerio que usted debe tener es en su iglesia local. It's very clear that the church needs you and you need the church if you want to grow up into and be like Christ. Si usted quiere crecer y ser como Cristo, usted tiene que estar en la iglesia porque la iglesia lo necesita a usted. Para que usted sirva en la iglesia y usted necesita la iglesia para crecer en la iglesia. So you should have a ministry within the church and if you don't yet, then you should ask the Lord to bring, open that door for that effective door for that ministry. Si usted no, si usted no tiene iglesia, usted tiene que tener una iglesia, no solamente tener una iglesia, sino in servir en cierta capacidad en esa iglesia. Y si no tiene una puerta abierta, pídale al Señor que le abra la puerta. Usted puede ser ujier, usted puede repartir papeles, usted puede limpiar el baño, usted puede limpiar la oficina del pastor, usted puede limpiar las ventanas, usted puede ayudar a poner el piso, a cocinar, en cualquier... Eso es ministerio. Amén. There are so many. I just told them something. I know, I heard you. <laughs> All right. Now, I like this scripture because it really summarizes our calling. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Ahora vamos a Lucas 4, 18 y 19. Estamos hablando de que Dios te llama a múltiples ministerios. So, we're to imitate Jesus, and these are scriptures describing Jesus' ministry, but we're to continue that. Dice que nosotros estamos llamados a ser imitadores de Cristo, y que estas escrituras que vamos a leer ahora habla de lo que hacía Jesús. Amén. Ok. I love this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Fíjense lo que dice aquí, ¿verdad? Dice, Gloria a Dios. Juan 4, 18 al 19. I'm sorry, so did I say Luke? No, you said John. Luke 4, 18. Oh, okay, Luca. Me dio, yo pensé, me Luke 4, 18. Luca. I realize you're probably in the wrong place. Luke 4, 18. So. Luca 4, 18. Gloria a Dios. Estoy donde no tenía que estar, pero gloria a Dios. Luca dice, mire lo que dice aquí. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí. Por cuanto me ha ungido para dar buenas nuevas a los pobres, me ha enviado a sanar a los quebrantados de corazón, a pregonar libertad a los cautivos y vistas a los ciegos, a poner en libertad a los oprimidos y predicar el año agradable del Señor. Eso es parte de su ministerio. Ok, so, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Para, how, how do you say that? Uh, it's the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, esto es el ministerio de reconciliación, de reconciliación 
a Dios y todos somos ministros de reconciliación. Ahora vamos a ir a asegurar de Corintios 5, 18. Ok, so 2 Corintios 5, 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us, this is to the church, all of us in the church, given us the ministry of reconciliation. Fíjense lo que dice aquí, por eso le leo eh, Lucas. Y todo, está, y todo esto proviene de Dios, quien nos reconcilió consigo mismo por Cristo y nos dio el ministerio de la reconciliación. Amén. Ok, verse 19, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word or ministry of reconciliation. Que Dios estaba en Cristo reconciliando consigo al mundo, no tomándoles en cuenta a los hombres sus pecados, y nos encargó a nosotros la palabra de la reconciliación. And in verse 20, I love it. Now then, we are, all of us, ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Dice, así que como embajadores, en nombre de Cristo, como si Dios rogase por medio de nosotros, os rogamos en nombre de Cristo Jesús, reconciliados con Dios. Entonces estamos nosotros llamados a proclamar ese evangelio para que las personas se concilien con Dios y eso es uno de nuestros llamados. And that is one of our callings to preach the gospel of reconciliation. It is. We yeah. are many evangelists. Yes. Todos debemos de ser evangelísticos. Yes, and that was part of the Luke verse that we read to mm -hmm. preach to the poor, the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Okay, a ministry we all have. Un ministerio que todos tenemos. And because a lot of people are like, well, I'm not called to that. But we, Hay dicen, Pero yo no estoy llamado a hacer eso. There are a lot of ministries in the Bible that we're all called to. Hay muchos ministerios en la palabra que el Señor nos llama. And I want to give you an example, Ephesians 6.18. Y le voy a dar otro ejemplo, Efesios 6.18. But we're to wear the armor of God, which includes praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Ephesians 5.18. En Efesios, I mean en Efesios 6, 18, ¿verdad? Dice que todos estamos llamados a orar, ¿verdad? Dice. Dice aquí. Dice. Orando en todo tiempo, en toda oración y súplica en el Espíritu, y velando en ello con toda perseverancia y súplica por todos los santos. O sea que el Señor, el Señor nos llama a que tenemos un ministerio de oración. Eso es un ministerio que usted puede hacer en su casa. Amén. Ok. So that's one example. I'm going to give you a... Ese es un ejemplo. Another one that's very dear to Marisol because the Lord gave her the scripture, Jeremiah 1.5. Ahora hay otro que, que es también otro llamado que está en Jeremías 1.5. This is a coin of Jeremiah and the Lord is saying to him, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Even before he was formed in the womb, Fíjese, este es un llamado, hay un llamado que es un llamado profético a la oficina del profeta, ¿verdad? Como yo. Dice, las palabras de Jeremías, hijo de Elías, de los sacerdotes que estuvieron a Anatol en tierra de Benjamín. Antes que te formaste en el vientre te conocí y antes que naciese te santifiqué, te di por profetas a las naciones. El Señor llama, hay un llamado a profetas para las naciones y este es un llamado que el Señor me ha dado a mí. And that's, why, and that's why as a side note, abortion is um, doing all three things the devil wants. It is stealing that person's calling because before you were formed in the womb he was called, stealing their calling, destroying that calling and killing them. That's why that is a demonic work and murder, abortion. Fíjese, y como, un, como una nota así al lado, por eso es que el aborto es tan feo, porque el aborto mata a la persona, 
cancela el propósito de Dios en esa persona y cancela el fruto y la bendición de que esas personas que de la cual persona se murió iban a alcanzar. Amén. God, Entonces roba, destruye y mata. God forms every baby in every womb. It's Dios a forma a todos los bebés en, en, en la vida. Amén. And when we understand that, we'll understand how precious that y cuando life usted entiende is. eso, usted sabe lo precioso que es un bebé y por lo tanto no 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 hace abortos, pero eso es una okay. nos fuimos fuera de tema. Amén. Last scripture before we talk about our ministries. First Corinthians Ahora, 16. Vamos nine. a la última escritura antes de empezar a hablar del testimonio del ministerio de nosotros. Primera de Corintios 16, 9. Paul speaking and he says, listen, for a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. And a door to what? Ministry. Okay. Dice, 16, dice, porque se me ha huerto, se me ha abierto puerta grande y eficaz y muchos son los adversarios. Fíjese que muchas veces cuando Dios le abre una puerta a usted hay adversarios. So the Lord opens the doors that no man can shut and shuts the doors that no man can open. Entonces usted tiene que entender que cuando el Señor abre una puerta, no hay quien la cierre. Y cuando el Señor cierra una puerta, no hay quien la abra. So if you want to be in the effective, perfect will of God. Si quiere estar en, el, en el, la voluntad perfecta de Dios y ser un ministro, un siervo de Dios efectivo. When he opens a door for you, cuando el Señor abre una puerta para usted, run through it and camine your por ella, corra por esa puerta y, y cumpla su llamamiento. Amén. And I have to say, y tengo que decir, in each of these ten cases, I, I believe that's what we did. Y en, en todos esos casos de los, de los ejemplos y de los ministerios que Dios nos ha dado, eh, eh, nosotros hemos cumplido la voluntad de Dios en esos diez ministerios. Amén. Ok, so we, we briefly said the first ministry, which was to the local church. So the second one is our TV, radio, Facebook Live, YouTube ministry. Ok. Um, okay. Yeah. El, la, el segundo ministerio que nosotros, te, nosotros ministramos en la iglesia local, ¿verdad? Eh, y el, el segundo ministerio que nosotros tenemos es la televisión, la radio, Facebook Live, YouTube, todas las, esas cosas que tienen que ver con, con me, media. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that is, and also three radio stations now. Estamos en tres estaciones de radio, tenemos el canal de YouTube, hemos estado en estaciones de televisión. And, and uh, many of those teachings are in Arabic and Spanish and then, of course, in English. Muchas de esas enseñanzas están en inglés, español y en árabe. Amén. Now we've stayed faithful to this for how many years now? Y estamos siendo fiel a esto como seven, seven? years? I'd say como seven siete years. Años. We, well, we should check. We can probably see. Como know, siete but... años más o menos. All right. So that's one ministry. And we told you how God supernaturally opened that up. Um, so... Y Dios abrió esa puerta sobrenaturalmente. Amén. All right. This, the second is what I just read, Ephesians 6, 6.18. I carry my spiritual mother... My first spiritual mother, Juanita Mullins, her prayer mantle, intercessory prayer mantle. And so our, our first ministry is an intercessory prayer ministry, our, our next ministry. Después tenemos un ministerio de intercesión de oración eh, que fue impartido en un manto de una señora que era mamá espiritual de pastor que se llamaba Juanita Mullins que era una sierva de oración y ella le impartió. Entonces nosotros oramos por las personas, intercedemos. Amén. Ese es el tercer eh, dimensión de nuestro ministerio. So, so we've easily prayed for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people um, interceding for them and praying for them at, at, the, man, at the altar of God. Hemos orado por, I think, a thousand, thousands of people. Yeah, that's a lot. Hemos orado por miles de personas en el altar. Amen. Yeah, we were charged with the prayer ministry at the altar at our last church, and then we did it with Mary for that year at many, many, many churches, and we and also we did it every time she came to visit. Yeah, and yes, yes. So. Okay, el, la oración nos hacíamos el teníamos estábamos encargados en el ministerio de nuestra iglesia del del de la oración en el altar 
orábamos con la hermana Mary cuando salíamos en el altar eh, a muchas iglesias y seguimos orando por las personas. La oración nunca se acaba, las necesidades nunca se acaban. Amén. Ok, Venezuela. I'd like el you to do that one because that's, they're all near and dear in your heart, but this one is special. El ministerio en Venezuela. The ministry in Venezuela is a, it's a, Multifaceted. Multifaceted. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. it, um, it has the dining hall, right? That we feed the poor. It has well, the, they feed them. We, they, just... we, we feed, we work with them together to feed the poor yes. in different capacities. Um, we have the Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Sunday school. Um, and then we have, um, we do a lot of, discipleship and work with the pastor in, in different things. Amen. Yeah. And, okay. and we're covering over them and spiritual mother and father too. Right. Okay. Which so is, then, it's, it's a lot. Um, and it's one of our, our most joyful ministries, honestly. Um, and, uh, and they're bearing a lot of fruit. Um, Pastor Jonathan and Anna and the church, they're bearing a lot of fruit with their children. And okay, so let beautiful. me say that in Spanish. Entonces, yeah. otra parte que tenemos el ministerio en Venezuela, con el comedor, con la iglesia, con la, la escuela dominical, y trabajamos con diferentes proyectos con el pastor. Y es uno de mis ministerios favoritos porque yo soy venezolana, entonces eso me llega al corazón. Y damos cobertura y soy la mamá, somos los padres espirituales del pastor Jonathan. Eh, que lo compartimos con otros padres, I mean, eh, y es bien lindo. And you know, and with that we have um, other people that we give covering to. Yeah, and they, uh, that's the next one. Just and it's really also an honor to Mary Catherine Baxter, which was an amazing spiritual mother to so many of us. Um, is I think part of what she imparted in us, and I kind of know that because she prayed things like this, is for us to be spiritual mothers and father, Mar Marisol and I, which Lord is just keep kind of blossoming. And it's really a beautiful part of ministry to be a spiritual mother or father. Entonces, eh, también somos padres y madres espirit pa espirituales a diferentes siervos. Y yo creo que eso fue impartido mm -hmm. a nosotros por nuestra madre espiritual, que era una madre espiritual tremenda. Tenemos hijos espirituales en la isla de Fiji, en Francia, en Estados Unidos. Y cada día el Señor va aumentando los hijos. Amén. Y eso es una, y eso es una faceta muy linda porque trabajamos con siervos y, y es una parte muy cercana a mi corazón porque eh, impactamos y ayudamos a los siervos a, a, y a las personas a cumplir su propósito. Amén. And I like that because being a spiritual mother because it's like mentoring yeah, and loving and yep. empowering and activating. Yes. And, and, and you know, I have to and say protect, this. And, a, and covering for protection. protection. And I have to say this. I think, I'll just say it. The only reason why I'm a good spiritual mommy is because I learn from an amazing Mary spiritual Catherine mom. Oh, yeah. And um, in my experience, being under her covering mm -hmm. and her being my spiritual mother, she was very nurturing, very loving, yep. very protective. Yep. Um, fierce. Fierce. She would... Um, she spoiled me rotten, right, Dexter? Espanol. Okay. Um, eh, ser una mamá espiritual, yo pienso que mi padre espiritual que es una cosa muy linda porque cuando tú eres un padre y una mamá espiritual, tú capacitas, tú amas, tú consientes, tú corriges. Y yo pienso que una de las razones que yo puedo ser una buena mamá espiritual es porque aprendí de una tremenda sierva, la hermana Mary Kate Baxter. Ella era mi mamá espiritual y ella me, me amaba profundamente, me enseñaba, oraba por mí, me consentía, estaba pendiente de mí, de todas mis necesidades, me llamaba, hablaba conmigo. Eh, eh, 
era muy amorosa, eh, muy cuidadosa de todas las áreas de mi vida. Entonces, eh, yo, yo, esa fue una de las cosas que yo recibí con su manto y con su impartición um, por gracia. Amén. Amén. Ok. And another, believe it or not, is counseling and wisdom. También consejería y, y, y caminar en sabiduría. Amén. El pastor Dexter lo que le ha visitado sabiduría y a mí también me ha visitado. Eh, y la sabiduría de Dios es esencial. And you know, like you are, I see when wisdom speaks to you. Yeah. And I was visited by wisdom and she took me to heaven. Yeah. And she showed me some things and I did a teaching on it. That there are cups you have to drink. In other, in other words, you got to learn to, to walk with the spirit of wisdom, all seven spirits. Right. Actually, and these were these teacups that you would drink at the, of understanding, of knowledge, of wisdom, discernment. discernment. And you would drink the cups, and at the end, then you leaped onto uh, a plane uh, that the steps of a plane. You had to, you had to do a supernatural leap, and then it turned into a rocket and took off. Yes. And the point being, um, I teach a lot about wisdom because I walk with wisdom almost every day of my life. I ask God for wisdom, and I, I honor wisdom. I seek wisdom, and because of that, then wisdom and counsel are always on your lips, ready to be given to others, because you're flowing in step with the Spirit. Cuando usted camina con el Espíritu Santo, usted camina en sabiduría. Eh, el Señor, la sabiduría me vino a buscar, me llevó al cielo, y me dijo que tenías que tomarte cuatro tazas. Sabiduría, entendimiento, conocimiento y discernimiento. Y que eso te activaba para tu poder el, dar el salto de fe sobrenatural. Y entonces y yo salté de, a un avión. Pero cuando salté al avión, eh, habían unas escaleras que estaban en el aire. Y yo subí por las escaleras y había oposición. Pero tan pronto llegué al avión que cerraron la puerta, el avión se cerró y se aceleró. Porque cuando usted camina... En fe sobrenatural y en la sabiduría de Dios, su ministerio, su vida, los propósitos de Dios se aceleran. ¡Fua! En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Um, ok, writing books. Escribiendo libros. Kind of comes from mama again. También eso lo recibimos de nuestra madre espiritual. Yeah. Go ahead. Eh, eh, es por gracia, es by By grace. Yeah, you, we have one book written, and but you have drafts of uh, two or three others. No, I have world. drafts of seven. <laughs> All right, seven. I was trying not to exaggerate. No, so. I'm not exaggerating, but yeah. I do. Fíjense que eso fue por gracia. Eh, escribí ya, hemos escrito un libro ya y tengo uno ya listo que se llama Revelación de la Esperanza y tengo siete más en producción eh, que tienen que ser traducidos y editados. Pero eso lo recibí por la impartición de manos. Eh, la hermana Mary me impartió su don de escribir libros y ella era una, una escritura, pro, escritora prolífica, escribió 12 libros. Entonces, esa es una de las cosas que Dios me está llamando a hacer más en esta temporada. You know, like, that's one of the things that the writing of books, we have uh, the enemy with their lips, but not their hearts. That one is written and it was an ebook. It's in Spanish and English. I have another one that's written that Brother Dexter has to finish editing that is called Revelation of Hope. Hope. And then I have Revelation of the Holy Spirit, Revelation of Wisdom. I have like seven that I have, they're written, they just have to be edited and completed. Hmm. And it was interesting because. Um, When I was writing these books, I showed Sister, Ma I showed Mama Mary. She says, I want you to name these books Revelation of. She says, as a continuation of what I've given you, what I imparted unto you. And she told me that like five years ago. I know. You know? Um, so, so, and even though I might have a doctorate or, or whatever, but the gift to write spiritual books comes from heaven, yeah. comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because you can be very intellectual, you can be very smart, 
But if the books are not anointed, if they're not anointed by the Holy Spirit, mm -mm. they're worthless. That's right. So, so, and, um, so she imparted that to me and she definitely had the gifting of writing books that would change people's lives. And that's one of the areas that me and Pastor Dexter are going to be more accountable in and more prolific in. Amen. And, and let me, yes. And there, um, let me just say this too. We both have full-time jobs um, and these ministries are ongoing. So I, I think it's safe to say all of us can look at our lives and realize that there's a lot more time that we have. And then the word says, use your time wisely because the days are evil, right? And we don't have that many days on this earth. So one of the things I'd like to quickly pray is, Father, help us to assess our time and where we spend our time and then put a fire inside of us that we cannot contain and cannot control to do the things that we have not been doing and awaken those giftings, awaken those callings so that we yes. will fulfill them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Want to translate that? Eh, eh, es importante saber que, que hay un tiempo limitado, 24 horas al día, ¿verdad? Entonces, pues tenemos que usar el tiempo que tenemos sabiamente para cumplir los propósitos de Dios en nuestra vida. Por ejemplo, los libros que estoy escribiendo. Eh, el pastor y yo tenemos que, que organizarnos mejor para escribir esos libros, ¿ok? Pe, pero todo en su tiempo, tengo que analizar la televisión, tengo que trabajar, el pastor y yo trabajamos tiempo completo también. Eh, pero Dios, si te llama, Él te da la habilidad de tú poder organizarte para hacer todo lo que tienes que hacer. Amén. Amén. Y también te trae personas que te ayudan. And then, you know, the, the Lord is so amazing. He will bring persons to you alongside of you yep. to help you. And, yeah. and I'm very thankful. I want to say and yes. I have a sister in Venezuela, Sister Mildred, who trans who translates my books into Spanish. Hallelujah. I and know. then um, and she's a blessing. Um, and then I have now the Lord has gifted me with sister. Robert. Nora, Nora Jackson, yes. who's going to be helping me technology. with technology. And she's smart as a whip. I know. She's amazing. And, and where's where she from? She's from Venezuela. Hallelujah. And she's amazing. And she's going to be helping me with the, the covers of the books and the formatting of the books and all that. So that is amazing. God will. So when he calls you. He promises to give you everything, everything you that need, need to accomplish that calling. Yes. He's always faithful. And that's a true test sometimes if it is a calling of God. Yes. And and it's amazing. And then when he called us to the radio, he gave us Brother Jerry. Exactly. Who's amazing and we just love him. Hi, Jerry. We love you. Amen. Amen. And, and he will connect you with people that are just amazing. That you're like, wow, you're so gifted. And that they're so full of God that you just were like, wow, thank you, Jesus, for them. Let me say that to them in Spanish. Yeah. Fíjense, hermano, cuando Dios te llama a hacer algo, también Él te conecta con personas que tienen un llamamiento similar a tuyo para ayudarte. Por ejemplo, el Señor me conectó con Mildred en Venezuela, que va a la iglesia del pastor Jonathan Herrera, que es mi hijo espiritual, y la hermana Ana, la profeta Ana. Ella traduce mis libros en español. También me conectó, ¿verdad?, con la profeta Nora Jackson, que ahora ella va a empezar. Ella es la que va a hacer los covers de mis libros y me está ayudando con todas las cosas que tienen que ver con la televisión, media, todo eso, de usar todo eso, formato, ser dos formatos para el libro, todas esas cosas. Entonces Dios te conecta con las personas perfectas. Dios quería un comedor en Venezuela y nos conectó al pastor Jonathan y a nosotros para juntos echar ese proyecto del Señor adelante. Y, y son personas que, que son bellísimas en el Señor, que tú las mires y dices, ay, Señor, qué lindos son, qué talentosos son. Gracias, Señor, por ellos. Amén. Y lo más lindo del caso es que Mildred, la profeta Ana, el pastor Jonathan y la profeta Nora, todos son venezolanos igual que yo y eso me trae gran gozo. Amén. 
Viva Venezuela para Cristo, Venezuela para Cristo. Amen. Venezuela for Jesus. Oh, oh and by the way, we're going to be having a women's prophetic conference in November with Prophet Ana Herrera, Prophet Nora Jackson, a prophet from Missouri, Venezuela. Her name is Eva and myself. Oh, and it's going to be um, in Spanish it's, and it's going to be translated, amen, in Jesus' name. Vamos a tener una confesión profética con cuatro profetas venezolanas. Amén. Gloria a Dios. En noviembre. And you'll have it on Facebook. Have, we're going to yeah. have it on Facebook. We're going to do you'll, it. But you'll announce it on Facebook. I'll announce it yeah. and we'll have it on Facebook and the YouTube channel. We're going to transmit it live on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. Sister Nora is going to do that for Hallelujah. me. Amén. Aleluya. So, Amen. es tremendo okay. las cosas que hace Dios. Okay, this one I'm going to combine with another one, which is um, the ministry of preaching in churches. And we've done a lot of that with Mary. And we've done and a lot of that. Because of that, we've also done a lot of that on our own. Last month, we preached in a church. This month, we're preaching in a church. And the fun thing is, they're Spanish and, and translated. Uh, and I speak in English, so we both get to do it together. Entonces, hermanos, también otra parte de nuestro ministerio es predicar en las iglesias. Eh, predicábamos en las iglesias con la hermana Mary, pero también predicamos en las iglesias nosotros solos. Eh, el pastor predica en las iglesias latinas, yo le traduzco. Cuando predicen las iglesias americanas, no le traduzco, no hay necesidad. Yo también predico. Eh, es bien lindo salir. El mes pasado ya empezamos a salir a iglesia. Eh, ya salimos a una en Orlando. Este es el domingo. ¿Es el no, es Sunday. Sunday. Este Sunday. domingo vamos a estar en una iglesia en Orlando predicando el domingo. Amén. Entonces, si usted nos quiere invitar, llámenos, ¿ok? Llame por medio de YouTube y por medio de la página web. Invítenos estamos, y, y nosotros iremos a su iglesia. And And vamos a estar en Kansas City. We're going to Kansas City. Amen. We have to schedule it. And... God has given you probably 10 rather vivid visions or dreams about really our calling that we're going to be going to Central and South America a lot more sometime in the future. I would call this more like a Joseph dream that it doesn't come true right away, but it will, it will come forth in the future. Y también en el futuro, el Señor nos ha mostrado, nos ha enseñado que vamos a empezar a hacer viajes a Latinoamérica y a Centroamérica para predicar. Yo he estado predicando en Latinoamérica, he estado en México, he estado en Honduras, en Santo Domingo, en Argentina, eh, pero vamos a empezar esa faceta de nuestro ministerio para predicar en las naciones, aunque estamos predicando en las naciones por medio de la radio, de la televisión, en Egipto, en nuestro canal de YouTube, Alcanzamos como 100 países, amén. Eh, pero queremos, el Señor nos está llamando a salir más afuera a Latinoamérica. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, and then the next one is, we've always done this, and it's Bible studies either in our home or online, and you just gave an indication of that. But that's something that, you know, our neighbors are asking us to have Bible studies in our home, and you're going to be doing the women's conference, prophetic conference. So, It is also a ministry that... And uh, I you know, had the women's ministry in my house for yeah, a long time. And, and we had the men's too. Yeah. So, yeah. Eh, eh, vamos, siempre hemos tenido estudios bíblicos en nuestra casa. Vamos a empezar eso de nuevo. Por mucho tiempo tuve un ministerio de damas en mi casa. En la, hace, pero se paró por la pandemia. Vamos a reactivar eso de nuevo. Amén. Eh, enseñando la palabra. Entonces, todas esas cosas que usted puede hacer... Todas esas son cosas que usted puede hacer de bendición para las personas. Amén. And, and our jobs. Y nuestro trabajo. Amén. Our jobs are definitely ministries. Nuestros trabajos de los dos son, son ministerios. In my job, I pray a lot. I speak about the Lord. I give thanks to the Lord. En el trabajo de él, él ora mucho, da gracia, testifica. Everyone knows that when we get a new, a new client, it's because the Lord opened those doors. Si el Señor nos da cliente, la gente sabe por qué los oramos. When we don't, because the Lord closed the doors, and we Señor. give glory to God both ways. Le damos ways. gracias a Dios por todo. And, and then your ministry with the children. Y yo tengo, yo tengo, yo soy profesora, enseño en una escuela. Y tengo unos niños lindos, preciosos, amorosos, 
que les enseño y los ayudo y son Did you tell me your teacher? Ajá, yeah, son teacher. son mi gozo yo los eh, son unos niños tan especiales y por razones confidencial no puedo decir dónde trabajo ni mis alumnos pero lo que sí le puedo decir que que cada día que voy no es un trabajo es es una bendición eh, poder estar con ellos, enseñarles, reírme con ellos eh, y, y, y formarlos educar, educacionalmente. Amén. And you know, Dexter, I have a, a blast in my job with my students. Yeah. They're so special and I enjoy it so much. And then, um, and, and God put me there and, and God put me in a school that is so special that is full of Christians that love God and that walk in integrity. And I just love it. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So I feel that some of you are being called, you know, to go and forth and preach the gospel. So I want to end with this and then and pray this. In the el, el siente que muchos de ustedes están llamados a, a predicar el evangelio en diferentes facetas, en diferentes maneras, como nosotros le hemos dado ejemplos para que usted no se limite. We've given them examples so that they don't limit themselves. No, I know, but, but this, I want to kind of put a little fire, and, and it's Romans 10, 13 through 15. Um, Romano 10, del 13 al 15. Yo lo voy a buscar en español mientras lo leen en inglés. And um, it says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent ah, by God? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not, <laughs> um, <clears throat> But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed, their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. And then he talks about Israel. But I, I want to stick with the scripture about how beautiful are the feet. Fíjese, ¿y cómo predicarán si no fueres enviado? Como está escrito, cuán hermosos son los pies de los que anuncian la paz de los que anuncian las buenas nuevas. Y esos pies son los pies suyos y míos, que debemos anunciar el evangelio para que la gente sea restaurada, para que la gente sea sanada, para que la gente sea bendecida y camine en victoria. And you know, Dexter, we are those people that are called to go and preach the gospel, to be a blessing, a light to them so that people walk in restoration, in healing, and are the forgiven giving of, of their, their sins. sins. Para que el Señor perdone los pecados del mundo y sean salvos. Aleluya. And Paul kind of gives a little bit of a rebuke in verse 14. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not even heard the si gospel? Si usted no los predica, ya no pueden recibir las buenas nuevas. Hay que predicar, hay que predicar. Amén. And how shall they hear without a preacher? ¿Cómo van a oír la palabra si nosotros no le predicamos? Amén. Entonces, hermano, motívese, motívese en el nombre de Jesús. Listen, Jesus made it clear the harvest fields are ripe. La cosecha está lista, la tenemos que recoger, amén, nosotros, los hermanos, a esos personas que necesitan a Jesús. He is the Lord of the harvest. Él es el Dios de la siembra, amén. And Jesus should get the reward for his suffering on the church by many saints. Y Cristo murió en la cruz del Calvario para que todas estas personas puedan salir. But here's Amen. the thing, how will they hear if you and I and Marisol do not preach? ¿Cómo van a oír si usted ni Dexter ni yo le predicamos? Van a oír, amén. He told Timothy be ready in season and even out of season. Le dijo a Timoteo, el apóstol Pablo, que estuviera to listo en temporada o fuera de temporada, que diera su testimonio. Amén. And the word says, they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. La palabra dice que ellos triunfan por el poder del testimonio 
y por la sangre del cordero que murió por ellos. Amén. So I ask, Father, that you put a fire inside of Señor, us. Señor, pon fuego dentro de nosotros. And give us boldness. Y danos valentía. Supernatural boldness. Valentía sobrenatural. To have divine connections with para people. Para tener conexión divina I ask con las personas. Open up doors of effective ministry, even to individuals in our Abre neighborhood. Abre puertas de, de, de administración efectiva. In our families en nuestra familia at our work, en nuestro trabajo open those doors, abre esas puertas unjenos para traer palabras de vida of the glory of our Lord and de la Savior, gloria Jesus de nuestro Christ. Señor In the nombre de Jesús. en el nombre de Jesús Amen. Amen. Dios les bendiga les queremos mucho y hasta el próximo viernes Shalom y acuérdense suscríbase al canal de YouTube God bless you Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, shalomshalom.org. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah,